Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about sensory sensitivity today. It's the reason that the the tag on the back of your shirt drives you crazy or the air vent or the sound of certain things or the smell of certain things just derails you. And at the same time, why for so many of us, this is the hindrance to us taking more action and finding more meaning and significance in our lives. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dr. Chris and it is my job, responsibility, passion in life. It's my passion in life to better understand the nervous system and how we can befriend it and teach it that we are not the enemy and how to take authentic action, live a more meaningful life and deal with stress as it comes, not as it blows us off course from what we really want to do in our life. And today, like I mentioned, we're talking about sensory sensitivity. So this whole conversation originally started because there was another creator out on the internet whose name I cannot find for the life of me, who is talking about the vent above the stove and having it on when he is cooking and how it is just destroying his nervous system. So I want to start this conversation by discussing what sensory sensitivity really is. Now we have our five senses, but our nervous system is perceiving all kinds of information at all times. And what it's doing is suppressing the noise of a lot of those when they're not actually viable or used useful to us. For example, and for a handful of you, I am so sorry for doing this, you forgot that you could see your nose right now. You forgot that your feet and your bum are potentially touching a seat and or the floor. You can also feel your hair, for my ladies and my long-haired gentlemen, behind your ears or touching the back of your neck. You can feel your shirt touching your chest and your arms. You can see things up and beyond this screen. All of these are contributing to the sensory input that is extinguishing or it's creating our perception of reality. Now, what sensory sensitivity is in the way that I've been describing it to folks along the way is that certain things have compounding factors. Most things have like a one X factor to them, which means that they are, they are one plus one is two. However, there are other things out there that are 10x, 5x, 20x the sensory input to our system. And if you haven't known this in the past, I want you to imagine that your nervous system and the amount of stimulation that it can take is a cup. And the goal of good quality uh, self-care routines and sleep is every day to start with an empty cup. And we'll talk about this in another day. But I want you to imagine a cup. Now, the more sensory that we have throughout the day, the more the cup fills up. And eventually, the cup starts to overflow. And when the cup overflows, sensory sensitivity and all the senses and life, no matter what it is, even the things that you enjoy the most, eventually turn into overwhelm and stress that turns us into a reactive, spicy, meatloafed individual that we all know and love. Whether you know and love it in this exact moment is totally up to you, but I know there's certain things in my life that just, oh my gosh, you just get so overwhelmed. Now, what we're gonna talk about today are the senses and how managing and understanding your sensory sensitivity is gonna be really, really important to getting more productive and finding meaning and significance in your life. And I'm gonna explain exactly how those things are connected, as I said. So my sensory sensitivity out there for the internet is pineapple on pizza. It's not, it's an inside joke, which if you haven't been around the channel for a long period of time or seen me on social media, it's just an ongoing pineapple on pizza joke. It's just whatever it is. My sensory sensitivity is actually sticky sensations between my fingers. And I'm sure if I really go back and trace it, there's some childhood memory that left me feeling completely out of control for long periods of time with sticky sensations between my fingers. But for whatever reason, having that is a like 100 times compound factor to my system. Having that quickly takes that stimulation and it expands it 100 times, which means that that cup of sensory sensitivity, that my senses cup, overflows and everything turns out to just be a dumpster fire for the rest of the day. So what I've learned through time, trial and tribulation, is to avoid having sticky fingers sensation between my fingers for extended periods of time. Now, this means that that's not the only thing in my life that creates that sensory sensitivity for me. There's additional things like having dishes left in the sink 
before I go to bed. My brain holds on to those open loops and the perception of knowing there's work into the future is another sensitivity that my brain is analyzing time and effort and recognizing that I didn't close that loop. And as you can quickly discover, there are so many sensory sensitivities that are out there, not only physical, but perceptive dialogue through time, language, communication, and we're going to go through some of the most common ones here. So we can go through the five senses, and what I would recommend you do is take some notes throughout this, right? So as our information comes in, in all the senses and all of our perceptions, eventually our system compares it to the past to create a prediction for the future, and that prediction for the future, if we didn't program the past, is going to create a reactive state that we kind of live in ongoing. A lot of us know this as an amygdala hijack, which is sending information that we receive to the limbic system instead of the frontal cortex or other areas of our brain that we have conscious efforting willpower to do something with. And this is the big challenge that a lot of us face in this modern world, that we live in a constantly reactive cycle that by the time we do get a little bit of a parasympathetic effect, rest and digest, most of us just fall asleep or we're so exhausted that we just cannot take it. And this is why I absolutely love studying and researching the nervous system because that was me when I was going through school. I was so burnt out. I was a fresh dad, single dad to my daughter and just trying to figure out a lot of these different things. And that's the entire point of learning about our nervous system here is learning to befriend it by learning to understand it so that we can do some of the really cool things that we want, which is discussing philosophy or figuring out that you just want a screen printing business to make shirts with rubber ducks on it. it whatever the heck the thing is, all those extracurricular things that give our life meaning and significance require energy. And for a lot of us, that energy is going to allocating and disguising or suppressing or expressing reactive emotions or dealing with the sensory sensitivities that we have. So the most common ones that people see, like I said, go through the five senses and just identify one for each that is just so stressful right? Something that just takes you over the edge, right? So my tactile one was the sticky sensation. There is the smell sometimes of uh, shrimp scampi, which I think I'm pronouncing wrong, but it's the smell of like white wine and shrimp cooking that like, I just can't do it. It like instantly gives me a headache and my system just goes no, right? The other one for me, high pitched noises for really long periods of time, like the whining of like fluorescent lights and stuff like that, which also has to do with visual. What you start to do is you start to paint this map and when you start to paint this map, you can start to look forward to what is going to happen throughout the day. And when I say look forward to, you're not looking forward to the sensory sensitivities. You're building, planning, and strategizing around the things that are unavoidable or creating different systems and strategies. For example, whenever I have to go into a grocery store that I know has those big fluorescent lights like Target, I oftentimes bring a pair of sunglasses in there or yes, I am the weird nerdy person that is wearing those red light glasses out in public because it's saving me extra sensory dollars that I want to invest into other meaningful things. And that is the point of this entire conversation is better understanding where your nervous system becomes overreactive, overstimulated, but it's the downstream effects of this that most of us are familiar with, which is at the end of the day, I'm just so reactive. At the start of the day, I feel like I'm carrying the burdens from yesterday, which is one of the contributing factors that I talk about so much leads to burnout where today you're completely out of resources, so you steal from tomorrow. And then when tomorrow shows up, you're completely out of resources, so you steal from the next day and the next day, and eventually there's no more days to steal from and you just collapse. And this is when our nervous system really burns out. It's frazzled, and if you don't listen to the whispers, you get the screams. This is when people start to develop autoimmune conditions, which, Fibromyalgia and all of these other autoimmune conditions that are manifesting themselves, I think have a very strong tie and correlation to overreactive systems. And while it's not your fault that you got born into this over sensory ecosystem of the modern world, it is your responsibility. And that's what this channel is always dedicated to is helping us better understand what to do in the face of this stress so that you can live a more meaningful life. Now, like I mentioned before, once we start to better dialogue and create either avoidance patterns in our life, uh, we want to reinvest that energy to beneficial areas of our life. 
which means that we want to be able to like study books. The books that are currently on my desk right now is a book of the five rings, which came with this really cool thing, by the way. I've got no promotion, but it's actually a really nice book. I got it from Amazon. But this is about uh, the undefeated samurai of Miyoto Muashi. Uh, which I cannot pronounce correctly, but this would be one of those extracurricular things that once you discover this, you can't go back. Once you find what you're good at and your purpose in this world, reading books like this, which would have been extracurricular for me 10 years ago, is what makes me better and better at my job today. It's the thing that allows me to really enjoy what I'm doing every single day. But in order to do that, you have to challenge the status quo of old programs that no longer serve you, get rid of them, and also take a lot of accountability into the patterns and programs that we live every single day. That is, in case you're wondering, Stephen the Seagull, Stephen Seagal. I thought it was funny. It's been funny on my phone for like three years, but this is the thing that kills most of our sensory sensitivity, in case you're wondering. The scrolling on our phone is absolutely horrific to our nervous system, which is why I really love companies like uh, Aura to help us better understand our biometrics and apps that help us block these things, right? So however that shows up in your life, and we'll talk about habits another day. All of this is breaking down to something very simple, which is in order for us to find our purpose and passion, it requires energy. And so many of us that want to be more inspired, be more creative, speak more fluently, talk better to our partners, love our partners more, love the present moment more, that requires energy that oftentimes we are not quite sure where the leaky bucket is. So sensory sensitivities end up plugging some of those holes and building the next layer of awareness for where the energy is leaking from our system. So take some stock, take some inventory, look at the areas of your life that are just catastrophic to your nervous system and see if you can build some strategies around it. And if you need more support and more help and don't know it, we run group cohorts every single month focused on these exact things. We're taking these short clips and expanding them into full live workshops where we can dialogue back and forth on the additional questions that you have. If you're interested in something like that, check out the links in the bio down below. And if you like this channel and you want more of this off into the future, don't hesitate to click that little button down there below so the next videos that we post will go directly to your inbox. Thanks for hanging out, guys, and it feels so good to be back here. As always, drop your comments in the comment section. I'll get back to you immediately. Have a great one.